water covers 71% of our planet's surface. The world's ocean is only 5% explored, and we can't even imagine how much more new and amazing things are hidden in its depths. In this video, I offer you a look at the most shocking and fantastic places in the underwater world. Enjoy your viewing. The oarfish is one of the amazing and lesser-studied inhabitants of the ocean depths. Previously, humans rarely encountered them near the coast, but not long ago, divers even managed to take photos with this giant. Oarfish are considered the largest bony fish among all known species. The largest individuals can reach up to 7 meters in length, although their average body length is about 3 meters. Their entire body is covered with tiny silver scales, their head is adorned with a bright red crest, and their back has tufts of the same color. These fish primarily inhabit tropical, subtropical, and temperate regions. They are deep sea dwellers, typically living at depths ranging from 200 to 1,000 meters. Only sick individuals might appear at the surface. After severe storms, they are sometimes washed ashore. Oarfish mainly feed on small crustaceans and plankton, but occasionally they feast on small fish and squid. Interestingly, some cultures consider them to be harbingers of earthquakes. Of course, scientists debunk these notions, but people believe that an oarfish appearing on the water's surface symbolizes an impending natural disaster. Conversely, Tourists consider an encounter with this unusual deep-sea inhabitant to be very fortunate. On May 12, 2007, a cargo plane departed from Gibraltar Airport to Florida, carrying on board 550 plastic containers with 17 tons of silver coins. It turned out the cargo belonged to the American company Odyssey Marine Exploration, which specializes in the search for sunken treasures. The origin of the coins, worth more than half a billion dollars, remained unknown. Representatives of Odyssey kept the exact shipwreck they found the treasure in a secret for a long time. However, after some time, this information was revealed. Odyssey's first successful treasure hunt occurred in 2003. Then, they managed to retrieve treasures from the sunken steamship Republic, worth over $75 million. In 2006, Odyssey embarked on a new project called Black Swan. As it turned out later, their target was the Spanish ship Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes, which sank during the battle off Cape Santa Maria in 1804. The company thoroughly studied archives with information about the ship, allowing them to locate the shipwreck and lift 17 tons of silver coins from the bottom. This discovery was simply incredible, which is why Odyssey's representatives refrained from announcing that they had found the Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes for a long time. Fortunately, Spanish authorities quickly responded to the situation and filed a lawsuit in the Florida court, demanding the return of the illegally acquired treasures to Spain. The Spanish, of course, won the case, and the coins were sent back home. The treasures of the sunken ship are now kept in a museum in Madrid, in addition to returning the treasure, the Odyssey team also had to pay a $1 million fine for violating the integrity of the historical heritage. The Titanic was the largest passenger liner of the early 20th century. It was built by the British company White Star Line in 1911. Its width was over 28 meters, with a length of 269 meters. The liner had everything for a comfortable journey, a swimming pool, a restaurant and cafe, dining and smoking lounges, and much more. It seemed that nothing could hinder its safe voyage from Southampton to New York. On April 10, 1912, the Titanic embarked on its first and only voyage with 1,317 passengers and 908 crew members. On April 14th at 11.39 p.m., the ship's captain was alerted about an iceberg directly in the vessel's path. However, it was noticed too late, and less than a minute later, a collision occurred, causing the Titanic to start sinking. The ship had only 20 lifeboats on board, and women and children were given priority. At 2.20 a.m., the Titanic broke into two parts, plunging 1,496 souls into the icy water. Only 712 people survived and were rescued by the ship, 
Carpathia. Currently, the wreckage of the legendary liner lies at an astonishing depth of 3,750 meters. In May 2023, the company Magellan Latent commenced a large-scale project to research the debris. With the latest technology, they managed to scan it, producing over half a million images from various angles. The project's main aim is to clarify the reason for the Titanic's sinking, and perhaps soon we might learn more about how this terrible tragedy truly unfolded. If you've ever dreamt of being on two continents at once, there's a unique place in Iceland waiting for you called the Silfra Fissure. This crack, formed by the shifting of the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates, sits right between America and Europe. This Icelandic attraction is very popular among diving tourists. The fissure reaches a maximum depth of 63 meters, and at its narrowest points, you can touch both America and Europe simultaneously with your hands. The Silfra fissure was formed due to an earthquake in the Thingvallavatn Valley. The crack split the bottom of the lake bearing the valley's name, forming a gorge of incredible beauty. The Icelandic fissure is not the only one on our planet, but it's unique, and it's not just about touching two continents. The water here is crystal clear. Visibility exceeds 100 meters. When viewed from above, one can fully see the contours and the bottom of the fissure. The secret to such purity lies primarily in the natural filtration of the water. The lake is replenished by meltwater from a glacier located 50 kilometers away. During its journey, the water stream passes through porous underground lava. Just imagine, this process takes between 30 to 50 years. Perhaps you won't find cleaner water anywhere on Earth. The water in the Icelandic crack is very cold, ranging from plus 2 to plus 4 degrees Celsius. However, this doesn't deter divers eager to explore this unique location on our planet. Today, almost no one believes in the existence of monsters capable of dragging away huge ships. However, in the past, sailors had legends that in the ocean and sea depths, there live massive, ruthless creatures resembling octopuses. Over time, these legends were forgotten. But a few years ago, people remembered the monstrous octopuses again. The reason was an interesting incident in the Pacific Ocean. When several fishermen went far off the coast on their boat, they noticed something very large in the water. An instant later, a gigantic squid appeared before them. The creature was about to cover the boat with its massive body, but for some unknown reason it changed its mind and dived deep underwater. The stunned fishermen hurried to the shore and told others about what had happened, but they couldn't provide any evidence. What do you think? Was it really a monster, or did the fishermen just get scared of some little-known marine inhabitant? Leave your comments below. In April 2018, three U.S. Air Force planes shot down by the Japanese Army during World War II were discovered in Micronesia. Among them were two SBD-5 Dauntless dive bombers and one TBM F-1 Avenger torpedo bomber. In February 1944, these military aircraft participated in Operation Hailstone. Their target was the Truck Lagoon, one of the most powerful Japanese naval bases in the Pacific Ocean. During the operation, the Americans destroyed over 200 Japanese aircraft and about 50 warships. However, there were losses on the American side as well. The Japanese managed to shoot down approximately 30 American planes, three of which were later found in Micronesia. The Recovery Project organization was involved in the search for remains of those reported missing during World War II. Their mission involved extensive research on the floor of the Pacific Ocean. During this project, the three aircraft were located. Preliminary data suggested that the remains of the deceased soldiers were inside these planes. However, after further examination, no information regarding this was provided. On the Bahamian island of Bimini lies a true paradise on Earth, the Paradise Point Resort. Less than 500 meters from here, at a depth of 3 to 9 meters, lies a geological wonder known as the Bimini Road. This structure resembles a path laid out with stones. It stretches for 500 meters and is up to 90 meters wide. From the main road, a branch deviates, resembling the English letter J moreover, 
Mysterious platforms and concentric circles were also discovered here. The discovery of the Bimini Road is credited to an American pilot. In 1968, while flying home from a vacation in the Bahamas, he noticed something unusual underwater. Subsequent underwater excavations were initiated under the guidance of archaeologists Mason Valentine, Jacques Mayle, and Robert Angrove. During the research, besides the stone masonry, the ruins of a temple were found. Initial analysis of the stones indicated they were approximately nine, 10,000 years old, comparable to the era of the mysterious island of Atlantis. One might think that the existence of Atlantis, submerged by the sea, was proven. However, further research into the slabs plunged scientists into even greater confusion. Their age turned out to be much older than originally assumed, around 28,000 years. So at the moment, it remains unknown which advanced civilization once existed here. Local residents have their own legend about this. They believe that the Bimini Road is a sacred place where gods themselves set foot. It's here that they bestow blessings on humans. In our time, with the availability of accurate maps and navigators, it's hard to imagine that finding the shortest route used to be almost an unsolvable task. For example, attempts to find the shortest route from Europe to Asia took a long time. The first person to explore the Northwest Passage was the Italian explorer Sebastian Cabot. In 1498, he tried to bypass America from the north. However, he encountered impassable ice and turned back. Many explorers wished to find the passage through the glaciers, but for several centuries, these attempts were unsuccessful. John Franklin, an English sailor, also decided to explore the Northwest Passage. In 1845, he led an expedition to discover this route. Still, his two ships, the Erebus and Terror, along with a crew of 129 people, disappeared without a trace. Five years later, on a small islet called Beachy near Devon, traces of wintering and three sailors' graves from Franklin's crew were discovered. Local residents claimed they had seen a group of foreign people. Consequently, all members of the expedition were declared dead, and the search for them ceased. However, the ships were never found. Finally, in 2014, near King William Island at a depth of 11 meters, the Erebus was found. Its ship bell and one of its ten cannons were lifted from the water to the surface. In 2016, the Terror was located in a bay near King William Island's coast. Despite its long submersion, the ship was beautifully preserved because the crew had meticulously closed all doors and windows. Detailed study of this discovery proved that despite their misfortune, the crew members managed to survive in harsh conditions for several years. In 2018, near the Yucatan Island, one of the largest underwater caves was discovered, spanning 347 kilometers. According to Mexican underwater archaeologist Guillermo de Anda, this discovery became the most significant archaeological site in the world, primarily because a plethora of Mayan civilization artifacts were found within. It is here that scientists found evidence of America's first settlers, information about ancient flora and fauna, as well as the culture and daily life of the ancient civilization. The artifact's age ranges between 10 to 12,000 years. Initially, archaeologists discovered two large caves, Sac Actun and Dos Ojos. It was later determined that they were part of one continuous system. However, the cave has not yet been fully explored, and scientists believe it might also be connected to three other caves. In addition to the artifacts, researchers found numerous remains of ancient humans and animals. According to scientists' speculation, certain parts of the cave served as a kind of cemetery. The Mayans associated the afterlife with water, which might explain why they immersed the bodies of the deceased in water. If someone told you there was a real lake at the bottom of the sea, you'd surely consider it absurd. But such lakes do exist on our planet. In 2014, at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico, scientists discovered a basin filled with dense, incredibly salty water. The lake's water and the surrounding sea do not mix due to their density differences, so a clear shoreline can be seen around this saltwater body. Scientists named this lake the Jacuzzi of Despair. 
The pool is filled with methane and hydrogen sulfide, bubbles of which rise and bubble as if in a jacuzzi. Despite its allure, this place is very dangerous, and its poisonous water kills any living thing that accidentally enters the lake. The Jacuzzi of Despair is not the only underwater lake. Such water bodies are prevalent in the Gulf of Mexico. During the Jurassic period, this location was shallow and cut off from the ocean. Over time, the gulf dried up, and in some places, salt blocks formed, reaching up to eight kilometers in thickness. When the Gulf of Mexico refilled with water, layers of salt began to be covered by very heavy bottom sediments, resulting in cracks and pits filled with monstrously salty solutions. These areas became known as salt lakes. The diameters of these underwater bodies can range from one meter to 20 kilometers. The Jacuzzi of Despair, in particular, has a diameter of 30 meters and a depth of about 4 meters. The temperature of its water reaches 18 degrees Celsius. On the shores of this place live giant corals with symbiotic bacteria, small crustaceans, and tube worms. All these creatures have adapted to life in extreme conditions near the toxic lake. And that's incredibly amazing. In the Indian Ocean, close to the island of Mauritius and the Lamorne Brabant Peninsula, there is a place of striking beauty. Powerful water currents directed deep into the ocean look like a genuine underwater waterfall. Unfortunately, this fantastic phenomenon can only be witnessed from a bird's eye view. Even the highest point in Lamorne Brabant doesn't provide such a perspective. Therefore, for tourists wishing to view the underwater waterfall, Local airlines offer helicopter tours. This place appears magical, but how could a waterfall form inside the Indian Ocean? In reality, there's no waterfall, and it's all merely an optical illusion. This effect is achieved due to the unique landscape of the ocean floor near the island. Strong underwater currents and coral movements result in the motion of sand and silt. Whirlpools are created underwater due to this. The effect is intensified by the presence of a depression about 150 meters deep. Because of all these factors, a contrasting transition is noticeable from the light shallows to the darker depths from a bird's eye view, creating the illusion of a waterfall. Although the mystery of Mauritius has long been solved, this place continues to amaze many tourists. In addition to the waterfall illusion, visitors also marvel at how the water in the ocean changes its color from green to blue, depending on the time of day. On July 16, 1969, a significant event occurred in world space exploration. NASA successfully launched and delivered the Apollo 11 spacecraft to the moon. For the manned landing, the super-heavy three-stage Saturn V rocket was used. During the Apollo launch, the first stage was used, equipped with five powerful engines that were dropped into the Atlantic Ocean. For a long time, they couldn't be found, but Amazon's founder, Jeff Bezos, decided to change that. During a private expedition funded by the billionaire, at a depth of more than four kilometers, all five F-1 oxygen kerosene engines from the first stage of the rocket were discovered. Each engine is of impressive size. Their width is 3.7 M, and height is 5.6 M. The total thrust of all five F1S exceeded 34,000 kilonewtons. The current condition of the engines is still unknown. They fell to the ocean floor from an altitude of about 100 kilometers and were immersed in salt water for a long time. In the Caribbean Sea, near the city of Cancun, lies the imaginative underwater museum, Musa. Here, at depths ranging from 3 to 6 meters, over 500 various sculptures have been installed, made from a special type of concrete that is resistant to water and environmentally friendly. The total area of this underwater art haven covers 420 SQ meters. The museum commenced its operations in 2010. Its creators were Dr. Jaime Gonzalez Cano, Roberto Diaz Abraham, and the British artist Jason Taylor. The project's authors aimed not just to astonish the world with such an unusual museum. Their primary goal was environmental protection. With this artificial reef, they intended to divert tourists' attention from damaging the real one. And they succeeded, attracting around 350,000 tourists annually. 
the museum is divided into two parts. The first can be visited on a special boat with a glass bottom. To view the exhibits of the second part, one must dive to the bottom. At extreme depths in the oceans, there are many living creatures whose existence is hard to believe, even when you see them with your own eyes. One such underwater inhabitant is the predatory tunicate, or megalodicopia. This animal looks very unusual and resembles a mushroom. On a thin stalk is a cap or head, the main part of which is the mouth. Unlike other deep sea dwellers, the tunicate stopped feeding through water filtration and one could say evolved. One of its siphons developed into a huge mouth, reminiscent of the trap of a Venus flytrap. Small crustaceans and zooplankton fall into it like a trap. Surprisingly, these seemingly primitive creatures are very close to humans. The thing is, tunicates are chordates, meaning they have a skeleton. Moreover, during the larval stage, tunicates have a brain. It is probably necessary for them to find a place to attach. After that, megalodicopia gets rid of its brain. How it does so remains unknown to scientists. What's more, tunicates are hermaphrodites. In the absence of a partner, they reproduce independently. And another fact, megalodicopia can fully regenerate its body from a piece of its torso in just two weeks. The predatory tunicate is just one example of how unique the deep sea world is. In 1977, during a dive of the American deep sea submersible Alvin to the east of the Galapagos Islands, unusual hydrothermal vents called black smokers were discovered. They are located at depths ranging from two to five kilometers in the oceans. The smokers themselves resemble pipes several meters high, constantly emitting black smoke. From these sources, water of an extremely high temperature, up to 400 degrees Celsius, erupts. However, the water does not boil because under these conditions, the distinction between the liquid and gaseous states disappears, making it supercritical. The black color of the emission is due to the admixture of sulfides and phosphates. When the hot water is expelled into the ocean, and comes into contact with the cold surrounding temperature, there's a release of iron, copper, and nickel sulfides. Black smokers play a crucial role in sustaining life in deep sea areas unreachable by sunlight. They can rightfully be called the oases of the underwater world. At the top of the vents, where temperatures reach 200, 300 degrees, there's no life. However, just below that, at temperatures of around 100 degrees, bacteria thrive, forming unique mats spanning several square meters. Further down, where spring temperatures don't exceed 80 degrees, Pompeii worms reside. It's noteworthy that they are the only animals on Earth capable of surviving at such high temperatures. Descending further from the vent's peak, one can find pagonophores, another type of worm. They attach themselves to the surface of the smokers, dangling their blood-red tentacles. The length of these worms can exceed two meters, even lower, the tubes are populated by bivalve mollusks, 30 to 40 centimeters in length. There, one can also find white crabs and various types of shrimp. At the base of the vents dwell deep sea predators, octopuses and Cerberus fish. Black smokers show us that life can evolve, and living organisms can adapt even to conditions where one might assume there would be a complete void. I believe many of you have heard about the burial sites of mountaineers, such as the one near the Russian ski resort of Dombai. Those interred there are individuals who couldn't imagine their lives without the heights that ultimately claimed them. It turns out our planet also has a cemetery for divers. It is located five kilometers off the coast of Key Biscayne in Florida and is called the Neptune Memorial Reef. The cemetery was founded in 2007 by diver Gary Levine. Here rests the ashes of many deceased lovers of the seas and oceans. To prevent the water from eroding the remains, Gary devised a method to mix the ashes with cement, sand, and silicone. From this mixture, a unique figure is created. Each of these distinctive monuments with a nameplate becomes part of the landscape of underwater reefs. The memorial reef lies at a depth of 15 meters, and its creator plans to expand it to cover an area of 65,000 square meters. The first person to be buried here was diver Bert Kilbride, who was listed in the Guinness World Records as the oldest diver in the world. This idea proved to be very original, 
and was well received by many diving enthusiasts. However, only their peers can pay their respects, as not many relatives would dare to dive to their graves. That's all from me. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.